What's up, everybody? I don't know. That's different. I want full Lightning McQueen on this one. So what's up? Good morning. Good afternoon. If you're watching this on YouTube after the fact, but right now, good Friday evening. It is. is it time? It's weekend. It's weekend kickoff time. Let's it's go. It's weekend kickoff time. Doobie, how you doing, man? Did you have a good week? It was a good week, man. It was a good week. Can't complain. Good the week. weather was definitely hit or miss. Super windy the first few days, but it started to mellow out a little bit. And so I'm excited for the weekend. We're supposed to have real good weather, man. So We are not. I literally cooked steaks on the grill tonight in snow. While my every breath I took was just nothing but steaming hot moisture because we all know i breathe hot air when i talk i mean that's just the fact so oh. um we're waiting on our other guest to hop on here uh we do have one here uh so we might have to do we uh we're gonna get there, folks. I promise. I got this. While got we this. wait on our while we wait, up, let's take a moment to Go. like acknowledge some of our sponsors here. Yep, and we do have the other one. So yeah, let's. We do have some sponsors for tonight's show, as Doobie said. So without further ado, here we go. And we are back. I think we can get the music to stop playing. There we go. It's gone. Sorry, <laughs> folks. Corporate music at its finest. But we all know you're not here to see us. You're not here to see us. We hope. But let's be real. We know who's on this show. For the first time, they're coming together since the show has aired on Netflix, America's Barbecue Showdown. Two of the favorites, of all the fan favorites, I said if you'd lined up all the people that watched it, these two were some of the two hottest commodities on the show. Doobie, how do we pull this stuff off? I don't know, man. Like I don't know, man. We got lucky. With this. this is a good combo right here. This is a great This is a combo. Weekend. This is the combo of combos. Ladies and gentlemen, dudes and dudettes, the people that you truly are here to see grubs and tina as she switches the widescreen there she is what's up miss tina hey. hey hey hi grubs hey how you doing girlfriend i'm awesome <laughs> good to see you yeah cheers everybody you too. cheers <laughs> oh tina's drinking oh that's water that's water is that water? I got water too. Yeah. <laughs> it's, 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 just, it's got the essence of blackberry in it. That's all. You know, it wouldn't be a show of grubs if I didn't take a swig from the old gallon jug. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> water. Georgia so water. Good, so good to see you, Miss Tina. So glad to see you. Well, I'm glad to see you. And I keep watching you on social media. Making those sausages that I know are good because I tasted them. I don't care well, I, what it says. And you wouldn't believe what I got coming up this weekend on the sausage. Tell what? us. Iguana? Philly, Philly cheesesteak in a I, sausage. I thought it might have been iguana. No, or possum <laughs> sausage. Possum <laughs> sausage. <laughs> I think that could be the next one. Iguana Philly cheesesteak. Who knows? Yeah, that's right. It's a little lean, though. You might have that extra fat. Might have to bump that fat ratio up a little bit, you know? Yes. <laughs> well, you look good. You haven't gained weight. I have. Well, I think, man, we all we just all get over. Hell, it's been, what, about half a dozen years since the damn show, it seemed like. So <laughs> oh, it feels like so long ago, but sometimes it still seems like yesterday. I know, sometimes. because, you know, because it's always there. That's the whole thing about Netflix. It ain't like it was on one of the networks at eight o'clock one day, one month, one year ago. It's like 
there. So people always, I'm at the grocery store today stacking glass in the wine department. Some dude walked up to me and says, can I ask you a question? Yeah. He, he says, were you on that barbecue show? <laughs> you know, like, how the hell am I not going to give it away with my the way I talk? Got <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I have but, people do that to me. They'll walk around like in front of me and, mm -hmm. and they'll, they'll say I have pearls on. I knew it. I knew it was you. <laughs> when they start wagging their finger before they start talking to you. Yeah, yeah. Us, oh, up. wow. There's a tell. It's like <laughs> yeah. the Jeep Wrangler wave, you know, where you yeah. do the one finger up when you're on the steering wheel. Yeah. So it's like, if this, you see this, which run. Finger is it? <laughs> no, not that it's one, Tina. One. Tina, not that this one. Is this the is the. This is, is a G-rated the operation. Then they say, can I take a picture with you? You know? Shit. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> then you say $5. I'm not going to believe last night what happened. <laughs> last that? night, and I don't know what, pers well, I do kind of know what persuaded me to do this. My Instagrams, oh, God, I probably shouldn't say this. Oh, anyway, I'm already into it now. That, you know, people could call you on Instagram. Y'all know that. Okay, y'all know. Mm -hmm. I still have like this much computer knowledge. But anyway, we'll and I looked at the picture, didn't have my glasses on, and it looked like somebody that I knew that cooks in England, and I cooked at World Food with him several years ago, like 2012. His name's Andy Arnett, and I thought it was him. No, it wasn't. It was <laughs> two fans from the show. They called me, which means it's like one or two o'clock in the morning there. And I, I don't know. For at first, I thought maybe they were, you know, dialing or whatever. But no, they wasn't. They, one of them is a chef, and they had actually just got home from work. And uh, so they wanted me to see my hog pit, okay, all that. But it's dark, so I'd take a flashlight out there, and I'm showing them around. He's a big green egg person. I had to join my egg, all that at night, you know. Anyway, it was just kind of crazy. I, and I never answer those because I, I really didn't know what it, you know, what that means when they call on Instagram. I do now and realize hey, hey, anybody can call you. <laughs> hey, Tina, somebody called my damn house right after the show came out. And I'm like, how the hell you got my phone number? Well, we can Google anything. And I'm thinking, well, that ain't, that's like, you know, that was creepy. It's dudes in South Carolina, you know? I'm like, <laughs> How you you know how you gonna call me? Cause I don't talk to I know my, we got caller ID on the phone, yeah. you know, and so I think you trying to sell me something or steal something when it, <laughs> when I don't know you in the first place. They were so, trying to reach you on your car's extended service contract. Yes, how, exactly. How, how you got my number? You know, <laughs> or your timeshare or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, let Google. me tell you, these two people were they were calling me from the UK. Yeah, well, <laughs> that's why I thought because it. That anyway, it was just kind of weird, hey, but they were hey, real nice guys. If they're watching tonight, and, I guess it's like Tina, two in the there's, morning. There, there's two what? dudes in the UK got my name tattooed on their leg. Okay, you, you win one with a sausage underneath it, and one with a little grill underneath it. That's just weird, yeah. Okay, I mean, he I, wins, he definitely yeah. wins. He got some guy winner, winner, winner. Winner. chicken dinner. That shit. I'm just glad, like, man, I'm glad they ain't on this side of the pond, you know. <laughs> That's winner winner that's winner winner sausage dinner right there. That's just creepy. But I don't that's know. that's the creepiest thing I've heard. Tina, is there any one person that you would get a tattoo for? No. Somebody would you could like like we'll bring anybody back from the dead. You get a tattoo no. and you can spend a week with them. Elvis. No. Jesus Christ. No. Yeah, I, Tina, I've gotten 11 <laughs> since the show's been on. I've gotten 11 more since TV show. Shit. You're making more money than me then. I, that's why I got to sell beer and wine at Ingalls. That's why I'm pumping. <laughs> that pays my tattoos because my old lady ain't going to give me the damn money. You know? So <laughs> I sell that sausage and that bacon, baby. Go get a new tattoo. Boom. Are you still, you know? are, are you still hiding the meat behind the Corona? <laughs> yeah, it was bacon today. <laughs> <laughs> I brought I brought in eight pounds, but it was behind the Modelo this time. <laughs> oh and, yeah, uh, I forgot. I think it was the Modelo the last yeah, time. Well, yeah, it, well, it's the Mexican section in the corner there because yeah. So uh, why is it always the Mexican beer section? It's, is that it's like closer the to the office, and I ain't got to worry about nobody stealing my damn bacon. <laughs> uh, maybe that was like the the weak spot in the security system where they couldn't see anything happening uh, over there. I, I pimped that bacon out, man, and uh, I could have sold more of it. You know, hell, I got. I got about eight pounds of this Philly cheesesteak sausage I have never made in my life already sold. And I ain't never made it. Wow. But uh 
we'll figure it out this weekend and it'll be good. It won't be bad, you know. So, <laughs> it won't so be is it it'll beef? be an experience. <laughs> so it's beef sausage? Yeah. Look, check this out. I got sirloin and I got beef fat. I'm going to do them together. I got provolone cheese that I hand shredded. I got peppers and onions that I'm going to saute in tallow and let it cool off and put them in, in the sausage. And red beard's brisket and steak seasoning is going to be the spice on it. Yeah. And I'm going to put it in a casing. Boom. Fill a cheese steak in a casing, baby. Huh, that you be, you eat that? I would hmm? eat it. I'd eat it. <laughs> oh, it's going to be good. I'm gonna, well, I'll tell you, it, it ain't going to be bad. One, it ain't, ain't gonna be bad. I didn't make too many damn sausages over the last two years. It ain't gonna be bad, you know. Are you gonna put them on a cedar plank again, like on the show? <laughs> no, no, no. This is fresh yeah, yeah. sausages. Fresh sausages. Too soon? Is there is there anything that's too soon? Like, yeah. No, you know, man. That, as far as that goes with me, I I ain't got no. Yeah. You know. I'm still Dude, hey. to tell just that I was involved in the show. I mean, to be honest with you, you know, I've so, known Miss Tina a long time. More longer than the TV show, we've known each other. We talked, we communicated for probably five or seven now, years. I don't know. Yeah. Now, there's an inside story with this. Now, you two, this was not your first show together on Netflix, if I'm not mistaken. You were involved on the same show before. What was that? It was a travel channel, and it was Amer. It was called uh, American, American Grill. Grill. I was the alternate. I was the alternate, and. Uh, there's guys, a couple of guys from North Carolina and South Carolina, Miss Tina, and I was the alternate, you know. But that's the, when I first met Miss Tina. Yes, and I knew I liked him then. Oh, <laughs> Cupid! How could you not? I mean, really? I know he's funny. I mean, he, and and it, what you say is what you get. I think I told you that time you didn't. Know. Yes. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. He, and, uh, he's keeping it real. <laughs> Hey, we all love grubs. I mean, look at me sitting there drinking a beer, drinking some water out of a jar. Hey, it's country as cornbread, as real as moonshine, baby. You know Woo! what I'm saying? Country as cornbread, real as moonshine. Oh, yeah. <laughs> nothing wrong with that. Yeah, there's right. nothing wrong with that. Nothing at all. But, you know, I don't. I, that's just the way I live my life. And especially, you know, going into the show, she, they all heard the story because I had the heart attack and blah, blah, blah. You get a whole new release on life when something like that happens, you know, and. You know, you just got to love it, man. You know, take it every day and love it and live it, man. And I love barbecue. And I tell you what, I got more into sausages after being on the show than I would because I've been making sausage for years on and off. But I, I made up my damn mind because the sausage got my ass kicked off that show that I'm fitting to be the damn king of damn sausages, the sultan of sausages in North Georgia if I got to be. And I'm, I, I've am i been knocking it out the damn park, man. I got a notebook Ooh. full of this stuff now. And I hope I might even kind of open me a little smoke shop, you know, a little sausage shop. That's right. That's right. <laughs> what do you sell it for a pound? Ten dollars a pound. That's good. That's very yeah. good. And it's it's That's handcrafted reasonable. artesian sausage. Well, as long as I can get the pork butts, won't sell. You know, I mean, because yeah, yeah, I mean, <laughs> that's, that's, I paid. Uh, I think it was two seventy nine yesterday. Holy cow! Good my lord! Butts. In Georgia? Yeah. I thought wow, y'all were. My, like my, port, I thought y'all were like the pork kings of the country. I ain't never gonna pay that. I ain't. I ain't never paid that. But I, I got them on sale. But I know a guy because I work at a grocery store. But uh, you know, last last case I got was a dollar forty eight a pound, and That's you got right. some up in North Carolina up with the UGO right now for one nineteen a pound in twin packs. They're a little fattier than the swift ones i've been getting but since i've been making a lot of bacon with it i like the butts that are have less of that fat cap and fat in yeah. them you know what i'm saying yeah well, cheaper for butts have more fat yeah for competition we look for some different things than you do for sausage so you know we look for certain muscle structure and things like that so when we build our box you know with for sausage you know, you don't have to be particular about that. You, you, no. you, know, you need a the main thing is that fat ratio, that fat meat ratio. That, that's mm -hmm. what sausage, you know. And right. Tina, Tina, I've been doing this buckboard bacon. I'm telling you with these pork butts, that's the way to make bacon right there, man. I've been knocking that. People buy the crap out of that stuff. I have and never the, had that. Well, well you, you just cut off the top of the pork butt? Yeah, debone it. Just pull the bone out of the butt. Butterfly it out into two chunks, halves, and cure it like bacon. 
But I've done it to where I've added sriracha to it. I've added brown sugar, black pepper, juniper berries. I mean, it's like, damn, you know what I mean? And then it's you good smoke stuff. it. You smoke it like bacon. Yeah, you cure, cure it, it because it's smoke it. Yeah, and then slice it. Just like bacon. Huh? Well, Don't mind me. You keep going. Don't stop. Anything <laughs> else? Anything else you like to share oh, the class? I'm he's just got kidding. his notepad there. Oh, yeah. Dirty. So far, it says grubs is awesome. I mean, but I've got some other scribbles in there too. Yeah. You know, his sausage was good. I tasted oh. it. I, well, I don't know if you remember. I tasted everything he made, and the, there was only one thing, and you don't know this grub that you made I didn't like. Oh, oh, it was the possum. No, I mean, I don't want to eat possum. No, it was it was actually good. I was surprised. No, the possum was actually good. It really yeah. was. I mean, yeah, it was had, wild stuff. What's that, the meat on possum like? What kind of flavor is that? What would you compare it's it to? It's dark. It's not near as gamey as a raccoon. You know, but it's a dark meat. It's like almost like a dark rabbit, I would guess, you know, the, the way you cook it. But the problem is with a possum is they're such small critters, you can't just go up there and debone a damn possum and then cook it. You know what I'm saying? You, you got to yeah. cook it and then finger your way through there and pull the damn bones out of it. Cause it so would you boil you know, it first? Would you boil no. it before? No. What I did is I used salt, pepper, and flour and browned it in the oven for a while then i throwed it in a fry pan use the sweet potatoes to make gravy with and for the thickener and just let it cook down with the carrots and all that other nonsense that you know we had whatever it was i, I like, can't remember now but it was, like but it was squirrel good meat, squirrel meat you're supposed to boil you're supposed to boil that down but according to who well up here that's what we always we grew no, up I on ain't uh, boil no damn squirrel meat yeah though. it was a uh, squirrel gravy and biscuits recipe you'd uh cook it down and boil it and then like uh get it nice and boil it first then you throw it in the dutch oven that's like boiling yeah. ribs before you put them on a damn grill what the hell is that all about man? hey man don't come out from my family like that man we ain't <laughs> I ain't never heard of it well i, oh, I, I hey, grew up eating hey. squirrel since i was 14 15 years old i don't remember us never done to boil no damn squirrels man we done that even, gravy even, and even Duck Commander boils their squirrels. Huh. Y'all might have some kind of disease up there in the north or something. No, it tenderizes the meat. It tenderizes the meat. That is probably it. They got, they, got, they got them critters up under the damn fur and stuff that don't go away, you know. Oh, oh, man. Here we go. Here's the Ohio hate. Here we go. Already. We already no, don't man, I respect the Ohio. barbecue state. Now we don't have squirrels that count as real squirrels. So well, what I, else, I, I what else do you want to take away squirrels. from me? I can't. I mean, what? You, know, you want to take you just got like? good, I mean, you got good basketball, though. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> yeah. I, ain't never heard, I, I never heard of bowling those squirrels, though, really. I, yeah, oh, it does. Man. It tenderizes the meat, though. It's a good way to get it nice. But you know what meat. else tenderizes the meat? Butter and vinegar when you're cooking it on open fire. Yeah, but I will say my family did not uh, open fire much. We were it's cold up there a lot. Y'all got a lot of snow and stuff up there a lot too. You know, we, we, we don't got time for low and slow. We work. We work the land, grubs. We, we yeah. only got an hour or two for dinner. <laughs> we're out shucking corn, pulling yeah. on cow teeth, getting milk. What else do you want, man? We don't got time for low and slow. Sharing the bath water and stuff, man. Animals. Grubs came out swinging, doobie. Grubs, grubs coming out swinging. He's spitting all over Ohio, man. I don't know how I feel yet. <laughs> no, I ain't got no disrespect to Ohio, the man. Squirrel. <laughs> yeah, Apparently, a communist boils a freaking man. squirrel. I mean, what, what else can I do, man? Note to self on my notepad: I had grubs is awesome. I'm about to like reconsider. Yeah, scratch that, that off. He's got yeah. yeah, grubs yeah. is squirrel hater. Squirrel, now, I love squirrel, man. He's I love squirrel, squirrel hater. That's what he is. Have you, have you ever cracked a squirrel's head open and ate the brains out of it? After you cooked I've it? never, I've never ate the squirrel brains, but See, I know why y'all boil them. That's My grandfather to do that. That's right. That's old school stuff right there, man. That was like the caviar of the woods, mm -hmm. you know? So I'm Yeah, they always say squirrel brains right. make you smart. Yeah. Well, I've tasted it, but I it, believe me, I don't wake up in the morning and say, damn, let me go shoot a squirrel and bust his head <laughs> up and eat his brains. <laughs> it wasn't that good. I ain't going to lie to you. <laughs> but I have tasted it, you know? Hey, oh, y'all. I'm going to butt in and break up this gross stuff. Y'all ready? Yes. Yeah. I'm ready. Y'all ready? Uh oh. Uh oh. Oh dear. G rated. I know what she's got on. Hey! <laughs> yeah. She knew it. Oh man. Tell them I the said, story. 
Tell me I sent that t-shirt to her. I sent that t-shirt to her after right. we I, that, I don't recognize it, but what is it? That was that was my it's a fluid situation, man. That was what I this whole show while we were filming, that's how life was. It was a I mean, they changed shit left and right. When I left the show, I sent a t-shirt to everybody I was on the show with that said that. Yes, and I'm wearing every, it right now. Yeah, every one of them. I sent them. I came home, had them made, and sent them to them. Because that's the way it was, man. And people don't realize. I mean, there's things that happen on the show, and you always don't. I mean, everything is not always up and the up and the up, you know. Yeah. But it's right. a fluid situation. Mm -hmm. Things change. Mm -hmm. and yep. That's how it always. They, they is. tell you, you got to be down in the lobby at you know five a.m. or. And then they don't show up and don't leave. It's just crazy stuff. And then, and then they, I still swear, Grubs, that you did not grab the wrong chocolate. It could have been moved. That's what I'm, I swear, yes. I, I just told my husband that not too long ago. I think, and I might have told Tony this, I think they switched the jars. I really do because well, I'm gonna tell you what, what when them things fell into the fire. It looks different. Yeah, well when them look when it fell into the fire, I think we was down to like three minutes or seven minutes or something. Mm -hmm. From what I remember. So I remember I'm out there on the green egg these thing, and one of them fell in. There. I said, Well shit, what do I gotta do? I gotta roll up in there and make another one real quick. And I just rolled up in there and went boom, 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 because Honestly, I don't remember putting the stuff back because I used it at my station. You know how that is. You leave it in state, they clean up after you, basically. Right. You know, Which good. but when I went back, though, I said, damn, I gotta make this one fill it up, you know, boom, boom, boom. Plus, you know, they hear everything you're doing all day long while you're in there. I don't in the care bathroom, you go to the bathroom. That's right. Eating in the corner behind the fridge, farting. It don't matter. They listen they to them. Shit. They can, that's, they, right. that's right, they hear that. Everything. What up? We got someone who's saying throw some respect to Ohio. I agree with that. I like that guy. I don't know who that guy is, but I like him already. Well, they got a good basketball team this year. Oh, let it go about the basketball team. No one cares about the respect, NBA. man. Hey, that's a, that's the most exciting thing going on right now. No, that's how. I mean, we are we are, general desperate for, we are desperate for anything, and we still do not care about the Cleveland Cavaliers. So that's no. A, but I tell you what, Joe Burrow here. and them Cincinnati Bengals is looking tight, brother. And they Joe Burrow good. comes from LSU. Hey, I got I got the Fleur de Lee on my arm, brother. I roll with LSU. Go Tigers. That's right. I That's love right. Joe Burrow. And he hey, brought, true man. story. I covered Joe Burrow in high school uh, for radio. When he was uh, at, uh, at his senior year, he was committed to Ohio State. I actually got to cover Joe Burrow in high school. That's probably the coolest football player I ever got to cover. But I guess I got to cover the Heisman winner and a Super Bowl attendee. But anyway, I know Tina's all about the football. Who's your favorite NFL team, Tina? I don't follow NFL. I kind of figured that's why I asked it. But so <laughs> if you were, were you? Would you she lives in Atlanta, and the team is the Falcons. Come on, yeah. So you got to be an Atlanta <laughs> fan, right? No, no, I don't. I quit watching uh, Pro Ball a few okay. years ago. I got you. Watch college ball then. Yes. Who's your college? Roll Tide. Roll Tide. Okay. Oh, Roll Tide. Well, she lives in Georgia. Ooh. I don't know. I know. Before or after this. Nick Saban. Before or after Nick time. Saban. I was oh. born in Alabama. You just gave Grubb the second one. Grubb's got a second one now. Roll Tide. Lord have mercy. No. <laughs> He's coming. <laughs> Tina Ooh. gave him the second one. Ooh. Damn it, Tina. We just got him back. <laughs> he lives in that gray zone too close to Alabama and Georgia. That's in a uh, this I'm is the only thing between there and Athens, Athens is Georgia Tech. Yeah. Yeah. Roll Tide, Lord have mercy. Yeah. Oh, okay. Blue Smokes yeah. Chase is the one that told you to uh, give some love on Ohio Grubs. He said you know who that was. Do what? Blue Smoke Chaser said you need to show. Oh some yeah, love. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's the one. Hey, he's I like dude, that man. guy. You're, hey, you got good friends. You got good friends. Yeah, I've, I've met a lot of people in the barbecue world. You know, that's how that works. You know. Yeah, I'm sure you both so, have. And all barbecue uh, people are good people, man. I mean, so it's a family. Out of everybody in your adventures, of everybody you guys have worked with, you've you've both done a lot of comps. Coolest big name food personality that you've got to work with, uh, Tina. Ladies first. The coolest. Or 
like not in yeah the someone that was a big name but they were actually like really cool like someone that you really enjoyed <laughs> being around and they didn't act like they what they were what they people some people might think they were Myron Myron mm-hmm he, he's actually nice and not only knowledgeable and nice I think he his TV personality he comes across more you know not what he is he's actually sweet he loves Cody my baby. Yeah, that's a, your sidekick. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then um it was really cool to meet Melissa. You know, because there's not a lot of women that do this. So that would probably be the two. Was and she then nice? recent, was she was she genuine? Like she they portrayed her on the show. I, you know, I think she's a tough judge. Maybe that that maybe is she was portrayed. A lot of people use derogatory term. Um, I was like kind of awestruck by her uh, because of what she's done for, you know, Barbecue. I don't like to dwell on the chick thing, but because that, that, especially when she started, you know, that wasn't the norm. So uh, she was very, very nice to me. Uh, like when we did get to talk to them, uh, which wasn't a lot, but when we did, but right. she was always so. We, I we didn't hang. We didn't all, just like hang out with them, you know. No, they were the, even in a different hotel. They didn't. Yeah. Even though that hotel was right next door to us, but. Well, I'm gonna tell you something. When I think about Melissa Cookson right now, the greatest thing, man, is that World Junior League of Barbecue. I think that shit's off the chain, man. When mm. you get all these young, getting these young people in there doing it, Texas has got teams now in their high schools, like a, you know, like a damn speaking team or whatever they got barbecue teams yep. melissa cookson has pushed this junior league of barbecue to the next level and man mm -hmm. that's what barbecue needs you need that new generation to come in and love it and appreciate it mm -hmm. because you know it'll die off but a lot these start. kids and, yeah it is but it's what she's doing start. with that regardless of what on the show anybody saw between me and melissa or melissa cookson what y'all thought or any, it don't matter I'm going to tell you, she deserved every right she had to be there as a, one of the queens of barbecue. With her and Miss Sylvia and Tina, to me, I mean, these are queens of barbecue. These are OGs to me in my life, okay? <laughs> so I'm appreciative to be part of that and humble by it. I ain't lying to you, but that whole Junior League of Barbecue, dude, that's off the damn chain right there. I think yeah. that's, that is that is just so cool to get this tradition to keep going on and going on, you know, so... Five years from now, you'll see season six or seven of American Barbecue Showdown of kids who were in high school when it came out, the first season came out. Yeah. You know, Isn't that crazy to think about? I think you're right. Yeah, yeah but it's you possible know, as hell. The, oh, it's going to happen. Yeah. Do you know mm -hmm. them, Grubs? The Pit Vipers from Tallulah Falls School? No, I didn't know. You know where no. Tallulah Falls is more? Yeah. Of, all right. It's closer they to my have, house. They have a team that kills it. I mean, unbelievable. They were first, I think, in, in all junior teams. But it's called the Tallulah Falls Pit Vipers. If y'all want to Google them, uh, Tom. Yeah, and at least teacher. check them out. I'll go, I'll go grab a plate or something if they cook in some barbecue to go yeah, and support them. Because that ain't far from my part of the country, you know. I know. I know they're up there near you. That's why I thought you may have heard them. Mm -hmm. But they, I tell you what, they are always uh, very polite and do very well. They have, you know, uh, young men and young women on their team, and they all have certain duties they do. They work, you know, they work when they're there. So they're learning more than just the art of barbecue. You know, they're learning other things. And, um, yeah. you know, I always speak to them. When yeah, the teamwork and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. they so have a, yeah, that's cool. Oh, go ahead, Tina. No, go ahead, Tina. No, Finish I'm your kind of forgot. Forgot. No. Oh, she forgot. So that's that's probably my fault. Just man that's talking, cool. talking yeah. a woman there, just just like in my yeah. normal house here. So Grubs, question back to you on out of all your journeys, TV, you know, who have you worked with that's a big name in barbecue or food in general that you were really impressed and blown away by how cool and humble they were and how fun they were to be around? All right, man, straight up, it's everybody on American Barbecue Showdown to me because. That was a pinnacle for me. That was a bucket list thing for me. This was a, a thing that, you know, I had got tried to get on the show five or seven years before with American Grill. I've been doing barbecue and I'm not a big competition guy, but I do a lot of community service with barbecue and I love cooking barbecue. And it was just, well, shit, I know I got a personality. So let's see what I can do. You know, and that's how I got to be an alternate. 
And that's how I got to be on the American Barbecue Showdown. I ain't going to lie to you. I mean, it ain't a damn Mr. America contest, though. It's a cooking contest, okay? So you can have personality, but you got to be able to throw down a little bit on the damn grill, yeah. you know? But yeah. working with those guys, all of them, when I told Tina when we were coming back from that first day, we did a walk on that Monday, I seen that Rutwood's name on the damn trailer. And they're telling me the gate watcher said, well, you can't say that. That's Rutledge Wood that's going to be a host on the show. Do you see these people's name of trailer? To me, it was like, holy shit, man. I mean, and then <laughs> Melissa comes out there and gave it blood so. Come on. It's not like I was born yesterday. I was in, you know, I was in barbecue heaven. When I walked in that hotel room, I ain't going to lie to you. Miss Tina will tell you, that lobby, I got drove in. They picked me up there. Car brought me down. And I see Miss Tina sitting over there on the damn table. What did we do? We ran up there and hugged each other. Yeah, we? we did. Yeah. I can't believe this. You know what I mean? It's like, damn, you know? And then I see Miss Sylvie, you know, she's a queen of you know, OG. I'm like, holy shit. Yeah. And I heard, <laughs> you, know, you hear some of these other teams. I didn't really know who Georgia was or uh, Shotgun was, but I knew the team that Ash had cooked with and Boat Ride. I'd seen it because I follow the barbecue thing. You follow the KCBS stuff, you know, you because that's what you like. You, you love barbecue. So you follow that and you see these people it's like, damn. And here I am, you know, and they picked me up first. And then we stopped and picked up Rashid and Rashid rode with me for the last hour to the hotel in the van. And we got to talk, you know, between him and I, you know, and I'm telling you right then, I said, man, that's a, I knew right then he's a smart mother, smart SOV. You know what I mean? This dude <laughs> knew what well he did he's extremely extremely intelligent man mm -hmm. and uh you see that right off the bat you know and i'm like damn so i'm coming in here and i knew i was an alternate because they told me going in grubs you an alternate and tina there was 10 of us when i got there on saturday mm -hmm. monday morning before we went to the set there was only eight left oh. and, and i was one of them i was like damn i can't even believe this you know i know it's like disney world hey <laughs> i fucking made it you know <laughs> So to me, it was the whole. That was the whole experience of that man. Is the, uh, awesome. the American Barbecue wow. Showdown? That was a bucket list thing for me. I'm 60 years old now, and I love it, man. I I don't know. I, I would encourage anybody if they ever get a chance to do it. And they're filming season two. Fine. I know a few people that talked to audition. Man, all I can tell you, go do it, man. Be a hundred percent in. Give it all you got and have fun doing it. You know, because it is fun. There's no doubt about it. Man. You never know who they're going to pick. I mean, it could be a novice or it could be somebody that's extremely skilled. Yeah. So it's, but uh, you, you just never know what they're casting. You don't know what they're looking for. They want but, a hodgepodge, right, Grubbs? Yeah, that, yeah, but people. they did so good putting them personalities together. Yeah. They, wh yeah. whoever, you know, Dominic and those guys, the producers, yeah. They did a marvelous job. Mary Fantos, she passed away before the yeah. show aired, you know, they, mm -hmm. but they did a wonderful job of putting in together all these different personalities, you know, and that's made a big dip that, 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 that makes it a good show, you know, but, and they managed everybody, you know I mean? That was in itself. Oh yeah. <laughs> I would say that. Yeah. They heard us around like little kids. You know how when you're, mom you're riding with your mom and you're well, she still does it to me now but and they hit the brakes and they do this ah! you remember that gross we couldn't walk mm -hmm. they put their hand out just like like just like that you couldn't walk but past. They, were, they would hurt yeah. you like sheep we spent a lot of time together and it wasn't just on set yeah i mean we spent i mean going to eat or whatever it was because you're always there together you know yeah so it was like well, big brother um, in that way. Yeah. <laughs> well, Doobie, I know you got some questions you want to ask here, but we do have sponsors of the show, so we're going to take a quick commercial break. We're gonna we're gonna play. Uh, we have been lucky enough to have been supported tonight by Mom's Place Gluten Free. Uh, use promo code the dude ten for ten percent off fifty percent any dollar any orders over fifty dollars or more on our website's free shipping. And also, if you use the dude network on Redbeard seasoning. You also get 10% on all orders on redbeardseasonings.com as well. So before we come back with more conversation here with Grubbs and Tina, Redbeard in the house, he's on the team. He knows what's up. Uh, Tina, you're the only one on this group that's not Team Redbeard. So if you feel left out, you should. So on that note, let's take a quick commercial so break. And we'll be, we're will we going to watch a couple uh, videos here of the cooks that uh, featuring these two products. Go ahead. 
So, in conclusion, I'm fat and I eat a lot of food because I don't have any other <laughs> videos of these products yet. So, if anybody's watching would like to submit future videos of any of these products, please send it to Tony or Doobie at the Dude Network, and we will gladly put someone other than this ugly ass mug <clears throat> eating a bunch of food and carbs and shit on there for the commercial spot. But anyway, thank you to Redbeard Seasoning. Thank you to Mom's Place Gluten Free, two of the many partners of the Dude Network. The show would not be possible tonight without them. So we were talking with both James Grubbs, Grubba Q, and Tina Cannon from Netflix's America's Barbecue Showdown. And let's just face it, that's the one accomplishment of their a million that they each have in their cooking careers. But that's the one that everybody just gives the most shits about. So that's the one we're going to use to bring the people into the show. So, Doobie, I know you have some questions that you would like to ask. You've been up there waiting very patiently, and I know you're just taking it all in yourself. <laughs> Being a pit master yourself, you know, uh, the full-time barbecue business up and running and full operation, I'm sure you got a question or two you'd like to ask them. So the floor it's is yours. Around, I would, all right, let's start with Tina. Tina, what is your favorite thing about competition barbecue? Ooh, that's good. Uh, walking on stage. Walking on stage. Well, I guess Hell she, yeah. She places a lot then. All right. That's a good that's Okay. A good okay. All right. Getting All right. checks. Getting checks. All right. It, getting like checks and snapping necks. Let's go. Barbecue. Like for somebody just getting into the competition scene, what would you recommend to them? Like what would be your biggest pointer? Me? Mm-hmm. Cook if you can cook with a team or take a class before you go. Okay. All right. Yeah. And then grubs for you, man, since you're the yeah. sausage king. For people getting into making sausages, I mean, would you recommend going with like the basic like KitchenAid setup at home? Or would no. you say screw the KitchenAid? Get an actual big meat grinder and a manual sausage stuff. Well, they don't have to be what, big. They, well, they don't have to be big though, man. But could you? My first sausage shovel is a three pounder, you know. But that kitchen ain't shit. You're talking about twice the work, man. Then okay, what you no. need to do? And I'm straight up. The very first episode of the show we did. Believe me, this is where your blinders are on. And I made the sausage for this like basic home plate deal, very first time. And I used the grinder to stuff the sausages. It's a pain in the ass. I ain't lying to you. But see, you don't focus because right to my right was a whole wall of sausage stuffers, and I never saw them that oh, first the time red, we were the big tall. Yeah, yeah. I, well, I never saw them. I'm over yeah. there fighting this damn grinder stuffing sausages, and in my mind, like, what the hell, you know? Then next thing you know, boom, there they are. No, you know what? and I'm they a, were right by you. They wouldn't. Take I know. From you. I know. And another the whole thing. Bunch of them. Miss Tina, the first that first episode when we had to go plate and we had to go down to the other end of the barn to get stuff to plate with. And I'm looking for stuff like what the hell am I gonna do? Because I that wasn't my like I was looking for a plating assistant and stuff, you know. It's like because this is not my gig. 
and I pull out what I need. And I saw, I said, well, shit, there ain't hardly nothing here. And, but then you realize afterwards behind you, there's a whole nother wall of plate and stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's just how focused you were because you got directions on that show. Mm -hmm. And I missed the sausage stuffers, but no, if, if you're going to look, I'm going to tell you straight up. If you want to do get a grinder and get a small sausage stuffer, use a sausage stuffer. It makes the job a hundred percent easier and uh, separate the two, you know, 100. from grinding and stuffing. Because if you over emulsify the meat by stuffing it with a grinder, then you get a bad mouthfeel of the product, you know? So get a grinder. Twice grind your meat, get a stuffer, stuff these casings. And even because you can buy small ones. I so said, I started out with a three pounder. I got a 11 pound stuffer now, you know, so I don't have to fill it Hell up. As yeah. Much. yeah. Dude, dude. That's right, I got man. a little Sausage. three pound one that you've turned the crank on. You know. I've been there and done that. Yeah. But, but mine's electric <laughs> now. Yeah. My, my electric one, I can put whole chicken legs in that thing and they grind up. <laughs> you know, so. Yeah. My dog loves hey, it. Me. It I was your turn, man. He, he shit on Ohio, now he's shitting on your sausage maker. So he's just on a roll. <laughs> oh, come on, man. But, uh, the, the equipment, yeah, it's all love, Grubs. It's the, all love. The better equipment you got, the better right. you make. Right. All joking aside. Right. Yeah. Just like yeah. Bryson. Yeah. Yeah. Basically, the Grubs is saying, <laughs> I pick. I paid my dues, is what Grubbs has said. Damn right, I worked my ass off. <laughs> and if, you, and if you're going to no ask more. me my question, and you're going to ask me, then I'm going to tell you the best way to do it. But you know, there we go. So many places you can get sausage grinders. You ain't got to go buy no fancy ass Hobart or nothing like that. But whether it's, I ain't endorsed by anybody, but Bass Pro Shop or Cabela's or LEM or Sausage Maker, they all got you know any of their websites got decent. Get but get you at least a half horsepower sausage a grinder. And then buy you a smaller stuffer. And if you feel like you're going to make more sausage, you get a bigger one. You know, we do them separate. And the reason, one thing about, I run a vertical instead of horizontal stuffer because of the space on my stainless steel prep table. You know, horizontal takes up a lot of footprint for storage. But a vertical doesn't take as much. You end up a little bit more in the tube after you stuff your casings that are left over. But, you know, you got to taste it and eat it anyway, so. That's the yeah. perfect part to pull out of there. Take and a little it patty, up. taste it out. Yeah, 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 yeah. Have you uh, have you ever done just like a, like uh, without the casing, make like a really killer sausage mix and just do like sausage patties for like sandwiches? Yeah, and yeah, but it's mostly heavier on the sage and the red and black pepper breakfast type sausage. Yeah, you know, and ground Italian sausage too because you can make meatballs out of it. But when it comes to all these flavors, these things I've been trying to work on, it, a lot of them have been smoked sausage. If y'all follow me at all, I've done a lot of smoked sausages. But I'm trying to get more into the fresh sausage thing because I've already figured out how to take any seasoning, which with Red Beard, and I, that worked 100% great when I the Red Beard number one, I called it, with this chipotle and this barbecue rub. And I made those sausages, they're fresh. And I gave them to people to try out and just give me your pro. Let me know. Don't blow no smoke up my skirt. Tell me straight up. It's a good sausage. And uh, the flavor profile is the bomb, man. So I'm, 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 I'm going to steer away right now from smoked sausages a little bit more to fresh sausages. Oh. And that's where that Philly cheesesteak that I'm fixing to do this weekend is going to be a fresh sausage, you know. So I hope it tastes like a Philly cheesesteak sandwich. And all you got to do is throw that rascal on a damn bun and squirt some mustard on it. And mm. Boom. You know. So. That's my goal. I ain't never did it. In it. Are you putting but, like bell peppers and onions in it? Yeah. Yeah. Let me tell you, Miss Tennis, how it's going to be. I got ground, I got sirloin, and I got pork, I got beef fat. So I got an 80 to 20 mixture there. But I got provolone. That's got fat in it too. I got mm -hmm. two pounds of provolone. I got peppers and onions, which I'm going to saute in tallow to mm -hmm. let them cool. And they will have that fat, that beef, because I've been rendering them to tallow. So they'll have that on there. So you're probably going to get about uh, eight, 75, 25% once you add the fat from the cheese and the vegetables. Mix it all together. Put it in a casing with Red Beard's brisket and steak seasoning. Boom. I'm talking Philly cheese steak in a damn sausage casing. That's there you go. You know? to wrap that thing up with bread somehow. Like, do that in a blanket. Well, you need a piece of white bread. Hell, you ain't got to buy no damn buns, man. Throw a yeah. catty corner this way. Throw yeah. that throw yeah, right yeah. Yeah. Hey, we do have a good, yeah. We do have a good sausage question from Jerk Charcoal. Do you freeze the grinder and or use ice in the grind? 
I don't use ice in the grind, but I keep my stuff as cold as I can the whole time. And when if I'm between things, I'll go, I'll stick it back in the refrigerator if I got to move stuff over. I'm not gonna let it, I'm not letting it sit out, you know. And, and the the grinder guts come off the grinder and go in the freezer between the grind. So you're talking about the head, the you know auger, all that stuff goes into the freezer and keeps that stuff cold because that can and see when it happens. And the reason they ask that, I know, is because if it gets too warm and emulsifies the fat to where the fat kind of runs out a little bit, and you don't want that in a sausage. You want the fat in the damn sausage. So you have to keep that stuff cold the whole time, the whole process. It has to be kept cold. That's, that's a, besides the cure and all that stuff with smoke, the main thing, you got to keep it cold, man. You don't want no funk in your junk. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, <laughs> I don't want any talk in my junk either. Hey, that's right. No. It's a junk, junk free zone. Junk free zone. That's, that's right. Free zone. No, funk, funk free zone. <laughs> and another thing I've heard on sausage, man, is I've heard a bunch of people say the pink salt you could do with or without, man. What's your take on that? No, well, when you're going to smoke it and cure it, you, you got to use it. You got to, man. Because if you don't, you're going to end up with some. Funk in your junk. That's the whole yeah. thing, man. But when you, the pink salt, if a fresh sausage, no. Smoked sausage, yes. And because you're only going to bring that sausage up to 150 degrees internal temperature when you're smoking it. And it could to be reheated and cooked later, but you want it to store and keep. So you can't, you have, uncured sausage tastes like shit anyway, okay? I ain't going <laughs> to lie to you. So, if you don't, it's like bacon, man. If it if it ain't got no salt to it, what the hell am I eating here? You know. So we're it's about like, to stay away with sausage. I mean, no. If you're gonna smoke the sausage, it's got to have the pink salt, man. About you know, quarter teaspoon per whatever. I got I got a menu. I ain't looking it up right now, but I got it all wrote down. Mm. But you got to have that because that it ain't worth it, nobody getting sick off your damn sausages. Okay, so. No, no, that yeah, nobody, I don't need to ain't nobody got time for that. Are you damn right. <laughs> How the hell am I going to be the salt and the sausages of North Georgia if people get okay, the damn sausages? They're be like, listen, Grubs, just because it's the Modelo section doesn't mean you need to give everybody the liquids. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> That's right. Because I charge premium price to go pull it out behind the beer and get you that damn yeah, sausage yeah. and make it. So. Yeah. Oh, yeah. man. You know what, so I got, Grubs? They, you ahead, remember they told him on the show that he didn't salt his one time. What did they? You didn't have enough salt in it. Yeah, the first one. Yeah, yeah, and that uh, I tasted it, y'all. Everything, like I said, everything he made was good. The only thing I didn't like, you didn't even bite on that grubs, was your tater tots. Uh, I know they, they was greasy, man. That shit didn't turn they out just, right I think at all. He didn't have time or whatever your time but was off because. Who doesn't like? He made homemade tater tots. I mean, he gave it a shot. I don't know if it was the the timing or what. Because of that, I didn't know. I just knew you gave it to me to eat, and I thought sausage. All that was great. The only thing I did not pause. All that was fine. Just I didn't like the tater tots. Yeah, Tina yeah. and I cook. We cook next door to each other inside the barn. Mm -hmm. so right. We shared. We shared glove. We, we shared seasonings. We shared whatever. The she needed to add whatever we mm -hmm. shared. I mean, that's yeah. if you were to put some herbs that Provence in your sausage, you probably would have won the whole damn show. Just saying. If bro. you had enough fat to go with it, though, you gotta have that. Yeah. It ain't you gotta have that mouthfeel to go with that herb to Provence. You know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can't have no dry ass sausage. I don't give a damn what oh, the flavor is like. No. Hey, the flavor <laughs> was good. <laughs> time for no dry ass sausage. Yeah. Hey, the flavor was the good. Yeah, it wasn't, herbs day, yeah, it wasn't <laughs> a flavor thing. It was a it was a dry ass sausage thing. That you know that's the way it is, man. Uh, but that's why uh, I've taken a point to, in my life to say I'm going to be the damn salt and the sausages in North Georgia. And I've been kicking my ass for the last two years making sausages. A lot of sausages and our experimental ones I kind of give away to people that I know that are good customers. Taste them and let me know. And now I got a notebook. It's getting full, man. But I got them sausage recipes. I'm telling you. What's your favorite one? What's the craziest flavor combo you've done that you just like can't look for that you just like, oh my God, I can't wait to do it again. Like something not traditional. Crazy. No, what um, it is traditional because I'm from Louisiana, man. And in the back of my mind, since I was a kid, there's a smoked sausage flavor that I grew up with. 
that goes in everything from gumbo to etouffee to sauce pecan to cubions. It don't matter. This is a flavor of the smoked sausage that stays with me in my brain. And uh, I've, I've made it using seasonings from other people to do it. So, and one of them was a uh, pepper Mary's Cajun seasoning. And, and another one was, uh, one, it was a different one before red beer, but I'm gonna tell you the last red beer season, I, they, people love that shit, but it, it's, it's on that, it's a smoked Shout sausage. Out red beard. Yeah. It's a smoked sausage dude. that's just got to have enough flavor and to know you're eating a good pork smoked sausage. That's the whole thing. Yeah. And, uh, and I say in the back of my mind, I have this flavor, this taste, because I grew up with it and everything we ate. It didn't matter. And that's what I've looked for because I can't buy it in North Georgia. There's, you, you can't buy that kind of sausage in North Georgia. So you have to learn how to make it. And uh, it complements every meal that I learned as a kid to grow up and eat and love and enjoy is that smoked sausage flavor. Like I say, from gumbo to etouffee to sauce pecan, whatever it is. Uh, with its shrimp and grits and smoked sausage on shrimp and grits, man, it's just like it's that flavor, you know, that flavor with that smoked sauce. Not Konica's good sausage. I ain't. I love Konica sausage. I love and that. It's, I, it is, but it's not that smoked flavor that I love to learn to love. But it's a killer ass mm-hmm. sausage. So, and I can buy that up here. But I said, well, if I really want that flavor, I got to learn how to make it. It's from Alabama. I know it is. <laughs> I know. Every time I go down to Gulf Shores, I buy about ten pounds and bring it home. <laughs> so, hey, we hey we got requests from the crowd, Grubs. You need to start a sausage cookbook. He should. I, I'm it's getting there, the man. First I, publication by the Dude Network. We're going to call it the Dude Network Publishers House. Man, I've come up. Person. I've come up with some kick-ass sauce, and I'll tell you what. And we've talked about this before, and I did with Red Beards Number One. I call it Red Beards Number One, and I could take any. Any multi-purpose seasoning that you can get now, I could take yours, Miss Tina, and let me. Tr- you need to send me a damn bottle of that, and I bet you I can make a smoked sausage that tastes like your damn seasoning. Woo! I bet you I can. I've I've, I've done it a hundred. I got I got a notebook. Look, you saw the notebook before, Tony. Look, look, look at all this. This is this is me thinking and shit all the time. You know what I'm saying? This is. <laughs> It's, it's like, that's how this stuff gets built and made, you know? <laughs> because this is me thinking and shit. I love yeah. it. So I'm writing it down. I'm doing what I do. But Tina, I'm, Ms. Tina you got to send me some of your opinions. Send me a bottle. And I'm going to make, let me make a sausage out of it. And I will ice it down and send it back to you for you to try. Ooh. I think you should just come on down. Yeah, so it sounds like a collab I, opportunity. You ain't that far. It sounds like a collab I can do that. opportunity. I can I can do that. Yeah, you, you should. Know? You can stay here with us. Lodging included, Grubs. Lodging included, and I guarantee oh the food God. will be all right. It'll be okay. I know It'll that's right. right. Bobby's right. Bobby's cooking. He went to barbecue school. He's gonna throw like eighteen <laughs> food things on some. Oh ribs. my God, he's listening. <laughs> the company's good though, you know. That's and it, the company would be next level. Yeah, yeah. You, you can but, come. Man, I'd love I, for you to. Well, oh, I need, we need to work out something where we come back and come dreams together. Come together. together. Some going on, you know? I'm, I'm on throwing now. that little recipe I've got. I'll share that recipe that I've made from using any multi-purpose seasoning to make your own sausage. I'll share it with anybody who wants to do it. And I guarantee you, whether it's fresh or smoked, it'll be a damn good sausage. Mm. I think you know? my uh, seasoning would be good in a, in a fresh sausage. Like uh, it, it's great with pork, but you could even make a chicken sausage with it. A fresh I, sausage. Uh, no, we uh, we can't go to the chicken route right now because I'm gonna tell you, Miss Tina, I went to this t- chicken route one time before or two, and I I don't know why even people eat chick fucking chicken sausage. I'm excuse my language. I don't know because uh, it just ain't right. Okay, there's, there's a texture issue. There's there's problems with chicken sausage, and I might have to grow up one day and figure that out. But right now, hell no. Well, you we, mix it with pork. He goes, sausage. hell no. Yeah. yeah, but then it ain't chicken sausage because, I, I mean, I've tried to get the fat ratio right, the dark meat, white meat, and it's like, oh, Lord, that just ain't right, man. You know, my dog really liked it, though. I ain't going to lie to you. <laughs> <laughs> thigh, meat, thigh meat and pork, pork fat. Can't go wrong with that. Yeah. 
Ooh. And a little of my European brand blend, which you can get at TinaCannonCooks.com. Ooh. All right. Ooh. Tina, and I bet I you bet I'm going to be good with this pork sausage by itself. I bet it be good in a pork sausage by itself. No, I promise. I bet, I bet you her stuff would make a killer breakfast yeah. sausage, too. Yes. I don't. I haven't tasted it, so I don't know, but you, it's, people expect I mean, a certain amount of sage You would need to add sausage. sage to it. It doesn't yeah. contain... Yeah, cl you close your eyes and walk into a spice factory, and that's what her stuff smells like. like it does. Not, not a spice really? factory, into a spice shop. Like if you're yeah. like a little mom and pop place. Is right. somebody asking something down there? I can't read it. Jerk James is, yeah. <laughs> if someone, if James is going to sell Miss Tina's, Mrs. Tina's sausage, he better wear some pearls. No, it's not. <laughs> that ain't happening. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what if I get it like black? I, I could, maybe I could get a Miss Tina tattoo or something in here, you know. Oh. I mean, <laughs> Tina can <of> cooks. <laughs> or get a little pearl, like a little pearl. Tattoo. Oh, you should get the pearls tattooed across your neck, dude. No, no, that shit ain't happening. No. Oh, no, that was the one. Hey, he's been cool hey. with everything until that, so we had to yeah. push it to the spot. And don't forget, hey, Tony, the Dude Network, I got a spot right here. Okay, I got an artist lined up. Let's not forget that. Let's not forget go. that. Okay, Tina, you're next. Nope. And then back I'm here, really, I'm, more I guess, in, I'm more of the branding type. Tina, yeah. I think you need a good throat tat of the dude network, like right here across oh the jugular. Oh, no, you know. Only when I after I get my tear. <laughs> <laughs> this one on the right. Yeah. <laughs> the right, or the, I don't know which one. Which oh my goodness. We're going off the rails like on a crazy train. Uh, uh, you got to do crazy things to get a teardrop. Let's not go there. <laughs> hey, you don't want to go there. He's probably put a couple of hogs. Hey, if you were to get a teardrop for every hog you've had to put down over the years, how many would you have? <laughs> oh, God. I eat pork all the time, so lots of them. <laughs> yeah. A herd. Look like a, look like a thunderstorm. <laughs> are, they kind of a herd or, are a lot of pigs a herd? I don't know. Pack a pack, a pack of pigs. I don't know. Anyway, let me ask Debbie a question. Let's Ooh, ask me a question for Debbie. Go. I want to know: Is that your real name? And if it's not, how did you get it? Oh that's, man! Hey, that's a good that's question, good Tina. So, uh, Debbie is uh, my wife's maiden name, actually. <laughs> uh, <laughs> So I shouldn't but, fire this up right now. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's know, put that over here. Uh, the side. <laughs> I mean, it's just one of those things. I've always been a fan of, uh, you know, the name. I guess you could say. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it covers a lot of it covers a lot of areas. So yeah, it uh, does. I so can't. You, <laughs> you adopted her maiden name as your name because it relates to something you really like. Exactly. Okay, just making <laughs> sure I got that right. <laughs> well done. Well done. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. Extremely. You know. Mm -hmm. We went fun. around that carefully. Yeah, I was like, you know, what's what's a good name that's catchy, you know, and uh, people are gonna remember it. Oh, and yeah. so I was like, okay, Doobie Smokehouse, you know, it's gonna get people thinking one way or another. You and know? whatever state and, you live in, it could be you could have a. Barbecue and a in New Mexico, you can. You can oh. in New Mexico. <laughs> there you go. In Ohio, it's legal, right? Where I'm at, it's a party. So, not in Ohio. No, we're not cool yeah. at all up here. We're not cool at all up here. <laughs> oh, okay. Our squirrels suck and our laws. No, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know why? The squirrels don't get enough damn exercise. They spend too much time. No, they're sitting around long. eating my. <laughs> They're sitting around eating my trimmings. I tell you, that's what they're doing. <laughs> so they don't get no damn exercise. That's why, because they'd be better if they was a little fatter, you know. <clears throat> I'll pass. I'd rather go to Kroger. There we go. Yeah. So hey, I got one more question for you before our final commercial break. Before we wrap this up, coolest competition you had on the show? Your favorite one? Grubs. We probably already know what yours is, but you might surprise us. But Tina. What was your favorite uh, episode on there of what your favorite cook was? Uh, oh, watching it, it was one thing, and doing it was another. Okay. All right. 
I liked the one where we did the goat and the fish. And, the, you know, we did three different things. And I cooked with Rashid on that. Yeah. I think that, that was probably my favorite. That was really cool. And that salmon tasted awesome. And then my favorite one to watch is the lobster. <laughs> the 4th of July picnic that happened actually in September, but it, yeah. that one, yeah. that was a, the, to watch because I'm like, you know, anyway, that's it. <laughs> Grubs. Grubs. Honestly, I think the sandwich competition and, but the 4th of July picnic, she said too, that was because that was so memorable, man, because that was actually our longest day of shooting while I was there the whole time. Mm. And uh, I mean, we're talking 16 to 18 hours. I don't know how long the hell we spent on damn set that day, but we was there forever. Yeah. And uh, but we fed the EMS and the paramedics and stuff, you know. And these guys came mm -hmm. out, and that was awesome as hell. And uh, plus, pl that that was also a challenge where we had we knew we had to do, them, and they threw this shit into us to be, in the middle of the thing about deserved or whatever it was. And I don't know. It just it was a really that was a good cook. You know, as far as I'm concerned, as far as us doing that together, because it, we were wore out, man. It was hotter than hell. I ain't going to lie to you. One last question here for both of you. Is the timing in the countdown, the three, two, one, that they always hype up? Like, how accurate is that? I think everyone, everyone thinks it's bull crap. I mean, let's no, 100%. It's straight up, man. In fact, it got to the point, Tony, where I would set the timer because you didn't have a watch and you, there was no clock. But I would set the timer on my stove on the inside cooking station just so you could keep track of it in your mind. That's okay. how real it was. Wow. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, you had to. And they would, because they would only come out and say every, whatever, 30, 40, 50 minutes. I don't know. It was up to the producers. Somebody holler out the time. Well, how much time is there? I don't know. Okay. So they'd say, we well, got 340. 340. You know, and that's how the shit went. I mean, it was no, that was real so time. So is that why everybody was always yelling out how long? Because they were just like doing a courtesy to everybody else to like let them know if they found out something. There was no clocks on the set whatsoever. There was Man. no timer or cook down thing or none of that. We couldn't you have know? our phones, anything like that on the no, set. That's crazy. No, it no. was the and and y'all were I know y'all gotta have a commercial, but you know the you know, the it's last, whenever what the last cook <laughs> the last cook of the hog and the brisket uh we got had over you know plenty of time i think for the hog but the brisket we had like five hours you know i've never cooked hot and fast honestly like i do some now a little bit but that was the very difficult very which one was harder for you brubs what was the hardest one the last one my last one that that bites into me because in the same token, it already, it's so much stress to do the whole thing to begin with. So when you get to it, you go each step, you go each step, you go each step. And so in my mind, I'm thinking, well, how can I accomplish this in the shortest amount of time to do what I needed to do mm -hmm. instead of exploiting a full amount of time to do what I needed to do? Worried about making it, you know, because the times were so real. So it was like, well, shit, because I, I hadn't made up my mind when we went into that, like, well, <laughs> okay, if I'm going to get a wild game and this other, then I'm going to do a, this stew and this sausage because I can do sausage. Fuck it. So, I mean, that was it. you know. I said, but I should open my mind a little bit more and I could expand it. And there's other things I could have done. But it, at the time, it's, the pressure is real. And people don't understand that. Your blinders are on. I mean, you're right here. And uh, you're focusing mm -hmm. on what you got to do to get what you got to get done at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. No matter what else. And it's short time. You know, the name, people, a lot of people don't know, it was American Barbecue Showdown, but the working title was called Smoked. We ain't had time to smoke shit. Okay, I'm going to be honest with you. It was all barbecuing and grilling. There was no, yeah, because you're trying to, like, I'm trying to, you want me to get my chicken and taste like you want me to get my chicken when it takes me eight hours, but you're giving me five. Mm -hmm. You know, so what do you do, you know? But right. the times were real. The times were challenging. And, uh, you know, I know they're filming season two and they're doing it. And I, everybody involved, I, man, God bless you all. Have fun with it and do what you do. And it'll continue, you know. But that's the real deal, man. And I'm, I'm going to tell you, 
love me, Miss Tina. You know, we we go back a long time, right? And we'll keep in touch. But everybody needs to know, man. I'm I'm humble about my experience on the American Barbecue Showdown because I never thought I even deserved to be there, you know, in my own little mind. But uh, evidently I did, and it's okay. And I did well with it. So let's work with that. And everybody else that gets a chance to do it, man, do it. Give 100%. Do you go on the damn show and do what you can do, you know? Yeah. It's amazing. Well, we're, well, we're going to take one last commercial break and we're going to come back and then we're going to wrap this show up with two of the most amazing guests we've had on this show. And Tina and Grubbs both been on multiple times. We love them so much. So we definitely want to come back and wrap this up in the biggest way possible. But in the meantime, take out these cool sponsors that are supporting this show, making it possible. So we'll see you here in just a couple seconds. Red beer. <laughs> Jerk charcoal. I've never used that charcoal. I don't know how good it is. It's, we'll, we'll get you hooked up. We're going to. <laughs> Oh yeah, we're back. We're back. We got commercial breaks. We got music overlays. We got tickers and everything down here on the bottom, which we need to switch back up here. I tell you what, you guys have seen the good and the bad, the bad and the developing on this show. You guys were with us when we were doing Zoom calls with like black space and everything like that. So, but I tell you right now, on a personal note. We would not be here, and Doobie will back me up on this, without both of you coming on early and supporting this show, coming back on multiple times. The people have loved you. Obviously, we've had probably the most consistent crowd yet of any of these shows, and I think it's because you guys are both they are familiar with you. You've We've given you an opportunity to come on here and be real, be personable, and people love you. We're so, keeping it uh, real. We're yeah, you're keeping it real with Tina and, I, and Grubs. I, I and uh, no, will. <laughs> we 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 thank you. It's a fluid situation here on the Dude Network. That's, with right. And That's Tina. right. That's right. It is, man. And, and, it's, and it really is. Take it in the big scope of things, right? It's what yeah. it is, man. So, 2022 <laughs> plans, Grubs. We, we're going to ask you first on this one. So what's 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 big for Grubs in 2022? And Tina, you're going to have the same question, so you get time to think about it. I know I got to think about it. Yeah, but I ain't got to think about shit because basically I'm just doing me, man. And uh, it is what it is. I got I, I'm, I got more vacations. I got more vacation. Hey, I got vacations planned this year just to get away from being up in all this damn nonsense and this COVID and crap. I'm tired of it, man. And I want to go cook, so I'm going to damn Daytona. I'm cooking. I'm gonna hang out. I'm going. I'm got a Little Feet concert next month. Waiting for Columbus, the live album in Atlanta. Me and the old lady's going to. That's right. See Little there Feet down there. That's right. Hell yeah, Daytona. Hell yeah, Reddington Beach. And then I'm going back home to the Chuck Man Lake Charles, Louisiana, in November. And uh, I'm gonna cook some brisket for some folks, and I'm gonna hang out. I'm gonna drink some damn beer. And, I'm going to say, hell, I love being 60 years old, man. <laughs> you know, it is what it you. is. I love you at 62, Grubs. I ain't going to lie one bit about it. <laughs> but I'm kicking that sausage's ass, man. I'm going to tell you all right now. <laughs> y'all ain't got an idea. I guarantee you right here, this damn Philly cheesesteak sausage I'm fixing to bust out this weekend. And Miss Tina, I'm going to send you some too, by the way. I want you to try it. But I'm going to send it frozen to you on ice. That's right, because... You ain't as far as Ohio and shit, so I know I can get to you without going bad and stuff, you know. I just got to come down to Georgia so I can be cool. I mean, it's very clear. Well, we're gonna, we're gonna, I'm going to go cook with Miss Tina sometime. If it's the same time you're available, y'all make a plan. I'll be oh, there, man. man. we do a little video down there, whatever. But she All ain't got like two hours we'll from my we'll, house. We'll fly Doobie in from New Mexico, too. We'll make, it a, we'll make it a hell of a party. It has to bring hatch chilies. 
I'll bring a bunch of heads. <laughs> and Dina wants some and I'll, of your and I'll bring sausage. <laughs> and Doobie's going to bring some of his Doobie Smokehouse goods from New Mexico, too. Okay. Just for you, <laughs> Tina. Edible. We'll bring you some yummy the green chili. You know, we'll bring the green. Us, yeah, we'll bring <laughs> and I'll cook you a hog. Yeah, hey. Hey. Oh, snap. I'm going to get ready. all up in that shoulder, though, for my sandwich. Yeah, I don't, that's a party. The, the back, the oh, front, and all man. that. <laughs> oh, there let's go. Let's go. Yeah. So and Tina, I'll come cook with, Tina, I'll come cook with you sometime. Seriously, I'd you know, you mess with me if you got something going on one time. You, you don't mind inviting me down there? I'll come. I'll come hang with you. I don't mind inviting you. Tina, yeah, twenty twenty two. What's big for you, dear? I know you got big plans. What what what's shaking, bacon? Oh, I, things that we can talk about. Uh, well, I y'all, I can talk about. I have another show on Food Network coming out, and it could be like season three of. B B B can't say. I know. And, but uh, I, <laughs> I, you know what I'm talking about though, don't I you? I know what you're talking about. <laughs> and then um let's see. I've got another hog class that's gonna go on. And also uh the first week of April, I'm going to New Orleans to the go Oh, Cusho Delay. Yes, I'm going oh, to snap. Uh, I'm going for uh, Hogs for a Cause, which is a large uh, charity event yeah. that I'm cooking for the same team that I've cooked for in the past. So right. I'll There's be there great for guys a few down days. there cooking. There's great guys. So we can there. raise money for pediatric brain cancer. Damn. And then I have a competition schedule, you know, of it. Right now it's 12 contests, but it'll probably end up being, it depends on points, race. I, I probably will end up being about 15 contests. So, Along with a few other things, but I'm gonna do a couple barbecue schools, both backyard and also, you know, competition style. Do I get a discount oh, if man. I come want to come to one of the classes? <laughs> yeah, you do the dishes. <laughs> do I get a discount? Okay. Hey, I Trump, do the dishes. You're going because I'll help hey, you. I know, I know how to run the mop too. You know. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, with the the though. It's all right. I'm a whiz with the broom, so I got that covered. Yeah, <laughs> that's wild. Oh man, so uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, let's just be honest. This whole thing has organically became a great thing, and thank you so much for both of you coming on here together. And it's pretty cool that it's the first time publicly that you guys have uh, been together. You wouldn't know it. You, you two talking. It's like, you guys just never missed a beat here on this. And uh, do be anything. Friends, man. Yeah, absolutely. We're Doobie. Barbecue, hey, we're barbecue family. That's it. That's, it's there, man. Okay. Oh, you know? Is there a better family in the world than the barbecue community and no. the barbecue family? Nope. No. No. Doobie, Newbie, you got the floor here, man. What? What are we? What, I know you got you got some questions over there here before we let them go. Um, man, Uh-oh. put you on the spot. No pressure. Go. Put, put me on the spot, man. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, man, I already used up all my good questions. I know. Yeah, I, think, I was out, so I was like, go on, Dewey. You go. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. So what are we gonna? What are we gonna have you guys back on here again? We got to plan the next time, and we then do. hopefully. We'll have some uh, some updates maybe after uh, Tina wins some competitions. You can come tell us all about it. That's and then Grubs, I'm sure he's gonna have some crazy some crazy sausage recipes. He's gonna have to keep us all oh. informed on. Soon. Yeah, because I ain't, I ain't uh, doing no competing. That that shit ain't happening. I just ain't got time. <laughs> and my pockets don't run like that. So I mean, I'm I'm making bacon. I'm making sausage. I'm making people happy. Boom. That's what I do. You know? hey, that's a win every day. So <laughs> so. Are we allowed to throw out some really, really cool, like sausage recipes for him to do some research on before next time? I got one. I need to perfect a Reuben, a Reuben sausage. Oh, hey, that could happen, man. That I could want... happen. Oh you yeah, sauerkraut my bre- in it? sauerkraut, some Thousand Islands, well, some kind of. But what about you? Got to have the corned beef to begin with. But it is in the same token, it's got to be at least fatty enough to carry a sausage. So in the brisket, you know, hey, and corned hey, beef corn brisket. Oh, I've there corned them, man. I've I've corned deer hams. I've corned them. I can <laughs> you can corn. I can corn anything. It don't matter. I mean, I don't know what it's going to taste like with can no Can you corn the iguana? Hey, you probably could, but it might be dry. You know, but we can I mean, pickle it. 
<laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> you know, it throw some like in that. It so, says bacon yeah. mac and cheese sausage. Ooh. Yeah, I know. I've seen that, man, and I'm, it's a beautiful thing, honestly. But it's a mouthfeel thing to me too, so I have to be accepted to that. Mm. But it's beautiful. That's wait till you see my sausage this weekend. I'm telling you right now. Can't Philly cheese cheese cheesesteak sausage. I got red peppers, orange peppers, yellow peppers, <laughs> green peppers, onions. I got provolone, my hand ground. I got the sirloin. See, wait till you see it. It's going to be a beautiful. It, Can you imagine a, he and I doing a barbecue school together? There would not be a lot. Of, there'd be a lot. Uh, of, be yeah. right. like, what go. if we did this? What if we did that? I mean, what if? Would it be a lot of what if and. We hey, yeah. hey we ain't hey we ain't dead yet right so who no. knows you know <laughs> hey me and Christina we got love we know that she's my uh, OG man we've been friends for a time when everybody couldn't communicate on the show regardless of what was going on me and Miss Tina did period we always have yeah and there's no ifs ands or buts about it. you want to do something together I'll come down there and I'll teach you how to make a damn cheeseburger sausage it don't matter to me. Hey, I got, I got the recipes. I've been working on this shit for the last two or three years because <laughs> sausage got me kicked off the show, and in my back of my mind, I got a little vengeance. So I'm gonna be the best damn sausage maker North Georgia's ever seen. Okay, and you know, that's, no doubt. That's the way. That's the way it is. Boom. There, we do have one last question from Red from Redbeard himself. He tried to send it. It didn't upload right, so I'm gonna like just hold the screen up here, and he's got a question for both of you, and it's actually a really good one. And I apologize I didn't get to it sooner. So this will be the last segment here before we get you going. So without okay. further ado, he's a handsome fellow. He's a handsome fellow. Yeah, his beard's a little tight. Hey, Tina and hey. Girl, how are you guys doing? Hope you guys are both doing well. Um, just had a quick question for you. What point in your guys' cooking careers did you realize that it was kind of more than a hobby that you wanted to take things to the next level? Um, Grubs, I know you're doing a bunch of stuff in your local community, um, making lots of sausage. Um, Tina, I know you're doing great things with Meals on Wheels uh, to support your local community down there. Um, I love your guys' content. You guys are great people. Keep up the good work. Thanks. So, Redbeard. That was that was our good friend Brad yeah. at Redbeard Seasoning. Couple, he had a good question for you. Go ahead. Go ahead, Miss Tina. When did I decide that I wanted to do? You know, I liked. My mom would tell you a different story than this. She would say something totally different. But I think the first time that I cooked something. And my grandfather and my mom and all, they liked it. And I saw the happiness that it gave. That's when. That is yeah. when. And I couldn't tell you how old I was or anything. I know we're still in school. But that, I'll put it in the back of my head when I decided to go to culinary school in Europe. That was what I was thinking. Now, things didn't necessarily <laughs> happen right after like that. Uh, just because it was a different world then and women in kitchens, you didn't see it a lot. But that that was the time. And I remembered what I cooked, too. I made a pizza casserole in a dish that I still have that was my grandfather's. That was it. That's awesome. Dude, that, that <laughs> was a better answer than anybody could have anticipated in Grubs. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I can't even keep it up with that shit. So. Bam, yeah. out of the I want to guess this but, story involves moonshine, if that no, was a thing. No, no, no. I'm going to tell you straight up, man. <laughs> Moving up here in Northeast Georgia Mountains, when I did, I've been here 25 plus years. And when I first signed up to cook barbecue ribs for the Relay for Life to help fight cancer, straight up, man. And my, look, yesterday, my brother in law was just diagnosed in his lung cancer. So, no. It's 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 just it's just been going on for years, but I've raised more money cooking ribs, selling ribs for American Cancer Society than I ever even before when, when I moved up here. So you start raising money, you know. We put together a rib cook off. We have three or four teams. Next thing you know, we're raising ten thousand dollars, twelve thousand dollars, man, selling ribs to help fight cancer. You know, so up here. A lot of money. 
It is a lot of money. It's, you know what it is? It's a dedication for the guys that came out and cooked and hung out and did what they did, plus the people who were buying these ribs to help support that fight. And uh, my mom's a survivor. My sister's a survivor. My cousin's a survivor. I've lost cousin-in-laws. I mean, this is a big thing to me, man. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's what, you know, I started doing this to not just win the rib cook-off, but to raise money. But that's how the rib cook-off came from, where I the local rib cook-off. Yeah. And now it's, it's at the point now in my life, I'm like, I don't care. It don't matter if you win or not. How much money can we raise? You know? And uh, unfortunately, because of COVID, we haven't been able to do it the last two years. So we're going to try to do it again this year. And, uh, man, that's what it's all about to me. It's uh, Barbecues, judging, eating, blah, blah, blah. It's all community, man. Mm -hmm. It's all about – it brings everybody together. Yes. And we're in the South. There ain't no better way to meet new people or new friends than over a plate of good barbecue, period. That's it. That's how you meet new people. That's how you get doing what you do. Mm -hmm. And if I can do it and raise money – Wow. To help fight cancer, guess what? Mm -hmm. I'm in. You should come you to know? New Orleans the first part of April. That's what we're doing there, raising money. Well, yeah, but I got well, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be in Daytona that week, April second to the ninth, because I'm doing it on a food truck and hanging out at the beach. So he's he's running the lap car. Well, oh. no. Uh, no, no, I'm drinking. On, hey, I'm cooking barbecue on the beach and drinking. That's what I'm doing. I hey, ain't lying to you. Just throw it in the fuel tank when you're done. Just I, like, nope, nope, I, nope, nope. I need this vacation, man. <laughs> you know. <laughs> so, but uh, well, it's what I do. What I do, man. It's all about. It's all about sharing the love, man. About barbecue. That's why. If anybody reached out to me today, man, on this network, or whatever, and said, "Hey, help Grubs, what you got a recipe?" I'll share, man. I do this. I ain't mad at nobody. I, mm -hmm. I, I, I love what I do, man. And I, the reason I love what I do is because it brings love to what I do. So if I can share you this, this recipe, this Philly cheesesteak comes out right, y'all can all have the recipe. You can yes. make your own Philly cheesesteak sausage. And I ain't mad at you. Love it. Enjoy it. It's going to be good. I, I can tell you that, you know, so. Well, and here's all people need to know about you two. You two probably have no business being on this show. You are much bigger than this show. So no, the fact that you guys continuously come on here shows you that you are willing to pay attention to those that are willing to put in the work and make things better. So for that, we just love barbecue, man. I know, but that just goes to show you like how awesome both of you are. We are truly humbled. I know I'm speaking for Doobie here, probably in the same process. Like we couldn't. It just begin to thank you guys for both of how much you have uh, been to the early success of what is a growing show. And uh, we can't wait to have you both back on as soon as possible. I know uh, Tina, you're coming back on next month. Grubs, we're going to commit you now to sometime in April, right? You're coming back on in April. When you buy my tattoo that you talked about, we'll go over hey, there. Hey, it's we'll, done deal. Do, it's impossible. Do network. Dude Let's Network, go. right there. We're, we're gonna unveil. We're gonna unveil the Dude Network tattoo in hey, April on Grub. Red, Red Beard's got some space back here too. I'm oh, Red Beard, hey, oh, Red Beard, man. he's hearing. He's hearing it. You Tina's put a gonna get on your elbow. Tina's gonna get a spider Tina. web on her elbow. That's what's hey. gonna happen. <laughs> yeah, it's all good, man. Hey, Tina, so I've got like twelve tattoos since the last time I saw you. So you know. <laughs> I know that's crazy. Yes, Chad Vaughn. Thank you both for taking the time, uh, Chad. Love you guys, man. That's great. Thoughts and prayers continue out for Chad, you and your family, brother. But um, hey, Grubs, Tina, thank you, thank you, thank, thank you. you, Doobie. Thank you for hanging out as always. You're a blast. You make this show go around as well. Don't forget about your place and all this as well. We're nothing without you, Doobie. As on that side. Redneck Shepherd O, Boudreaux, Blue Smoke Chaser, Chad, Mo. We got Redbeard on here, Jerk Charcoal, Masshole Chef, Mo's Backyard Barbecue and Grill, and many, many others that have contributed or anybody that's commented along the way. Thank you for your participation, and we hope to see you guys next Friday. And if you want to know who that guest is, you will find out Wish next out Friday on Instagram. We love you, baby. We love Call you. Me. Call, Call me. me. Call me. Call me.
Gotcha, baby. <laughs> Dudes and dudettes, we'll see you next Friday. We'll We're going to be guys. drinking, you know it, on the weekend kick-in party here on the Dude Network. Everybody, we'll see you next time. Bye, dude.